We are back for the penultimate session, session three, in this full session workshop, using acrylics, giving the basics, and today we're going to be using both sponge rollers and brushes and doing a beat scene. So what materials do we have? Well I've got my set of acrylics here, heavy bodies are all ordinary fire, I've got my mixing tray, some sponge rollers, water, the brushes, and of course the picture to work from. Um, and there we go. Good morning. Yeah. Right, so yes, the last film is up on YouTube, and you can go back in it and see in detail with the, the camera actually on, on the thing, what we did last time. Today then we're doing these seascapes, and we're going to use these sponge rollers, which might appear at first to be very crude lumps of sponge, but in fact it's amazing the um, delicacy we can do with them. And we can put paint on heavily with them in quite wet and cover areas, or we can use them very gently to almost glaze like a gauze across the picture. And if you look to my uh, site, you can see various paintings I've done. I'll show them on camera now. of um, cafe scenes, great big scenes, and landscapes. So they'll, they'll work for any scene. And you can pay quite thin lines by using the edge of the roller as well, or by twisting. So it keeps pretty getting used to. And of course you can't always really see, see exactly what you're painting because the roller gets in the way, so it gives the feel of the roller as well. Um, you'd be surprised how seldom you have to wash them out because we're going to work from our lighter colours and mid tones um, and then go down to our darks at the end. We're going to do all of our background painting effects of light with the roller and cover the canvas and be more than halfway there. And we're going to finish with our brushes over the top. So basically it's the old technique of painting fat over lean, painting the thin paint, the lean paint first, and getting everything covered. And then we're going to put the fattier, heavier paint on top, as you see with the clouds and things there and the waves and so on. Okay. Um, you've got uh, you've got your mixing plates, you can use the mixing plates to use the rollers on. I like these little trays you can buy cheaply in BQ places for them as well. Um, because you can just uh, you know, squeeze the roller out on that. You will need um, a fair size, I'm going to use a fill, but a fair size brush just to start with. Um, because you need to mix the paint before you use the roller. Doesn't matter which brush you're using, if it's a decent size one. Uh, again, if you've got old brushes, this is a good time to use an older brush. You don't want to use your best brushes to just mix it. So if you've got an older, slightly like stiffer brush, that's fine, just mix in the paint. And we'll show you how to use the roller across the brush to get the paint out of it. Let me get my paste ready now. Like uh, and of course we can use light techniques as well. And when we come to the, to the end of it, there's nothing to stop us from not only using brushes. We can use ordinary sea sponges as well. We can use ordinary sea sponges as well. Right, we'll make a start. Now, I'm going to have you almost painting step by step with me on this one. You'll need, uh, in the way of paints, I haven't put paints out yet, you'll need to have out um, turquoise, cerulean blue and cobalt blue, and you'll need Prussian blue for the darks. So we'll have to get the paints out. So you'll need, uh, cobalt is our medium sky blue, ultra medium is the stronger one, but cobalt will do for this. Cerulean is our greeny blue, turquoise of course is a very green we're going to want that for the, for the horizon. Um, we'll need the Prussian blue for uh, doing very dark areas. Let's we'll put those on later. Um, you'll need lemon yellow. You'll need yellow ochre. Lemon yellow will put with the turquoise to make it an even slightly greener turquoise onto this. Yellow ochre will give that lovely golden um, colour on the beach. We're going to need burnt sienna. And we should, get, hopefully, we'll get away with that without. We might. We might still need ultramarine. Looking at the, the photograph now, we might need some ultramarine. We'll try and get away with, it, with, with, it, with the uh, cobalt. We might need a bit of ultramarine for the distance for those stronger blues, because we're using a lot of blue in this, different warm and cool hues of blues. Remember from the other week, we talked about every colour having a warm and cool hue. So our warmest hue there is going to be the ultramarine, which is more purple blue, and the turquoise is our coolest icy blue. 
And then with our warms there, we're going into sort of very light mauves and purples. Um, so we're going to need some magenta, aren't we? White, of course. Um, and that, yeah, that, that should do us with that lot. We should have enough there. Um, so yes, maybe we should have some oxygen in the palace as well. So yep, yeah, get some paint sorted out then, and we'll make a start. We're going to start with our sky. Quite often in landscapes, I draw the sky first, and then work from the horizon outwards. Very often, the horizon is about the mid-tone, which you see there, isn't it? It's just about the mid-tone of that whole painting. Um, so I'm going to work uh, the background colours of this up. And we're doing the it's the right hand painting of the two. Now, this composition is based on photographs taken on uh, Hilton Beach in New Zealand. And um, I digitise them, as you can see, they're not just straightforward photographs. I tend to take them and enhance them and play with them. And there'll be about eight or nine versions of that, from which I will choose the parts I want or the colours or you know get more creative with it. You don't just want to copy. So I can take a sponge roller, we've already dampened yours, I haven't dampened mine yet. And um, first thing I do then, is my, see my colours here, is decide um, which colour I want to start off with on the sky. I'm going to start with my, I'm going to start with a, a cerulean, which is this sort of area of the painting. I haven't even drawn it out. So just a quick, this I know where I'm going, I don't need to draw much out. Um, so if you want to just sketch them out now, just see it's just above halfway, horizon line, dead straight. Um, let's see, to mark on here my usual quarters and eights. So halfway there, quarter there, just below that line there, and the down. That comes across, coming into here below that, that there, coming slightly up this, that line. That line comes just on halfway here. Down like that. Yeah. 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 Here, in, round, out, back, down. That's all we really need, isn't it? It's the basic shapes like that. Are you doing the top one or the bottom one? Are you doing the bottom They're one? They're both the same. That's the painting of the top one. Yeah. They're almost, I mean, the, 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 the composition is slightly different. You can see how I've used the photograph at the top to make that painting that's here in front of you. Right. So what I've done is simplified it. Um, but that, and then that comes around from there on that way. Those are the basic shapes that I'm going to need to do what to do. Oh yeah, not far out, sorry. Okay. What's that angle? That angle comes down slightly. It's leaner right. in. It's not straight across. Right. You see, it's just below. I mean, yes. when, when, um, when you're doing it, it, what I did was I did my halves and quarters. Right, okay. And then you check that against your, uh -huh. make the same marks on there. Yes. And you'll find that this comes from just below. The shape is here. Now I do it normally just by using my fingers like this, and I can see between using a square like that where things come halfway or whatever. Mm -hmm. Remember in your drawing, when you make your first two marks on here, the whole thing is dependent on those. If the mountain top comes there and the sea comes there, then everything else has to work with that. So the first two marks must be right, and you've got to get the angles right. So if you have a piece of card cut out, and you mark the card into quarters and eighths, yeah? Yeah. you can even put an elastic band across to help you, and if you want to check the angles, you can check. You can move the elastic band to the actual angle of the object, and then you can see it against your. You can put it over your picture and look through and see the angle of your picture. So that angle there, for instance, if I put my elastic band in my card frame from here to there, I could look through the frame at my angle here and check it's right. I can see where things come on my frame as I'm looking through it. And the closer I bring my frame, the more I see through further away the less I see, so I'm making a change in my composition. It's a very easy mechanical way to judge things. I just do it with my fingers now like this, but you could use a frame like that. So there's a little trick. With photographs, mark your photographs, actually mark them. Some people even grid them completely to make sure everything's correct. But you can usually see where things come, you can drop down. So for instance, we'll take this flow here, which is being lost. 
we've got we're coming in just below the quarter mark there. Into there. So we're going to have to. I'll just put up a little line. You need to rub that one out and this one out. Okay. So you know we're going to get lost in the line. That one. That one. That's the line there, not that. One. This one. So measure up yeah, first yeah. and just get those yeah. proportions right. Then get the angles right. So you can see. Use the roller over the brush. Watch these. Watch these. Watch right. the roller over the brush. Right. Use the paint in your brush. You see, I'm rolling that through the brush. Okay. Mm -hmm. Through the brush like that. So what I've done is roll my roller through the brush on the palette. Then we look at where it's going to happen on here. And we've got some lovely areas of light blue around here. So I'm just going to roll onto that. And I'm going to press very hard. I want a solid coat here of this light blue. We're going to put more on later. It's going to be even lighter later along here. And very, very hard because I just want to coat my canvas in that line of light blue there. Now, so you can get used to using the roller, we're then going to do exactly the same thing. But we're going to use try and ask you to use the edge of the roller more. So rather than painting flat now, look, I'm going to use the edge and just come along here. So I'm using just the edge of the roller now. It's going light as it goes up, up into there, just along here. I'm using the edge to make a, a strong line and it gets lighter above it. Like that. I don't think I've got enough paint. Right, so that's as you put further in the first thing you need to get used to how much paint. So you have got nearly enough paint, no, no, far more. See that. Next we're going to add some of our cerulean blue, that's this one, into the same position in your palette. So take some of that into your plate, about that much again. You can see how much I've got there. Mm -hmm. Mix it up again into the colour, just, just don't really spread it all over, just mix it up. And again, bring your roller through the brush. So bring your roller in the paint through the brush like this. And we've got our next blue ready to go on. So I don't want any white canvas showing at all when we're using this now. That's the important thing to lose the texture of the canvas. We can use, we're going to use the texture later. And I'm starting, you see that, what shall I use the roller please? I've gone across there, and you see the previous coat had a bit more cerulean, didn't it? A bit more turquoise, and now I've got more cerulean on my roller. And I'm starting to feel around this cloud shape. I'm starting to use the roller in different directions, like this look. Still very solidly, right down till it joins here. Now, what's this bit? While I join, I'm going to just gently flick it on. Look at that join I get, soft. <laughs> the same this side, look, I'm going to use that blue coming into here, and I'm going to use the top edge of the roller, watch again, mm -hmm. the top edge of the roller like this, to just link on. Look how softly that just links in. It blends like a brush, it blends beautifully. You see, I've linked that across. Watch again, please. Mm -hmm. Just a little touch of it across the surface, just to link it. Just a little. Now, one of the things that I keep advising you is when the colour is on your brush, if it's somewhere else, use it there, rather than wash out your brush. In this case, it's a roller. So what I'm going to do now is come down to the sea here, and I'm going to coat hold of my sea here, all the way down here. I'm going to leave myself a very light line of white. Yeah, we're still using the oh, sorry, and sorry. Sorry, white and sorry. Um it's a bit wrong on that. So I know this is the sorry, we'll sorry right way through here. And I'm going to leave a little line of white just where the sun is coming here. I'm going to now come back onto some of the, the sea here, and especially in the background, I'm going to lighten up just the edge of the roller. Watch please, edge of the roller, along the top edge here. I'm going to just go along, leaving a very slight dark line at the top, just gently putting this blue over the surface. Right hand here, other colours to 
use yet. Get rid of the whole of that white now. This is the turquoise and white and a bit of yellow. So now we've got the two different turquoises. This turquoise is lighter than the previous one, a bit more white in it, and it's got more yellow in it. I forgot what to mix this one with. Which one? Well, the next the, one, the last one. The, the previous one was just the same with it. This is the turquoise, white, and a little bit of lemon yellow. Yeah, lovely. You're all naturals at it. You're great stuff. Right, so how much white is going in about that with a bit of yellow? One of my past students, in fact the one I just painted in that scene in my garden uh, in France, just said what a lively class you are. <laughs> a little bit of ultramarine now, a new touch into that last colour. Whichever colour it is, it doesn't matter whether it was the cerulean or the um, a nice even mix there. Sorry, which one? This is for the... Which, which one? Is this the yellow? Uh, no, this is the... You've done the light yellow, you've done the, yes. uh, you've done the turquoise and yes. the yellow, right. and I put a bit of that yeah. in there. That's You're rubbing too hard, you're rolling too hard. I want you to start using it much more gently on the edge. So now I'm going to use this one, um, and something like that, and I'm just going to show you. Um, and then start um, down there. Um, mm -hmm. really. Just gently. Coming into the edges here, and instead of gently undoing that, just letting it catch the surface of the canvas. And we're going to roll it here. And we're going to bring that right down to the sea. It's probably going to be just used by mistake instead of the same thing. I'm now going to go back to my um, turquoise ceremony. My turquoise ceremony, and just finish off this bit here. Right, at this stage, as we've got quite dark colour on, if you want to go back to a lighter colour, you're going to have to go and wash your roller. If you want to go to a lighter colour now, we've got all that paint on there, we need to go back and wash the roller so we can start again with lighter colours. Right, it seems to have lost. Right. Just lightly with the edge of my roller, just bringing up these bits of light. Can you see there how I've used the light over the dark to make this stand out, leaving it clear, and how I've pushed the. Well, I've still got a great big piece of white which I'm completely confused about. But that's like this one I've just painted out now with this turquoise. So I've just done this one. So we want some of the turquoise. Mm -hmm. So a little touch of magenta into the ultramarine now to make a nice gentle move. And we're going to use this yeah. on the distant field using the edge of the roller on. So we're just going to use the edge of the roller on the top edge of that hill. Look at the difference that makes. Just a subtle little touch. Now I'm going to do it up here. And I'm going to make it a bit stronger with the blue later. Just a little touch of magenta on the edge of the roller. Just like that. And I'm going to make it a bit stronger with the blue later as well. Just use my finger if I want as well. Nothing to stop me from blending with the finger as well. Just to give. That brings it forward of the background sky. Now, whilst it's on my roller, I'm going to use it down here solidly, quite solidly, into the sand. I'm going to build up the whole of this sand solidly here with this colour, right up to the edge of the sea there. And I've got a lovely mix going on because I've got the previous cellular blue on my do some vertical strokes as well to get the feeling of wet sand. Use the edge of my roller again. Oh, I can see how I'm going to use the sand just here where it comes out. We're going to get rid of this right canvas now as soon as we possibly can. So we'll use this colour up that we've got. This one we're going to do some more colour that holds it. And I'm going a bit lighter now. I'm using up some of my turquoise into the centre of this sandy area. It's what we call controlled activity. We're using the colour that's already on the roller. In the same way as in watercolour, we let one colour flow into another, controlling the activity, controlling this activity. Right. That one. Yeah. Lovely effects. Good. Right, so white and magenta. Not magenta and white. White and magenta. Always much more light. Green, 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 green
that to me. Sorry? Did you say white and then magenta? Yeah, always mix your light colours by putting the white first, otherwise you'll have a ton of it. So you just add a little bit of the magenta to it. Very gently, just feel the surface and turn the sponge. Just put the light bits in place, see if it's turning the sponge and just feeling these little bits of light cloud wherever they are here. Just feeling those surfaces of them. Don't overdo it. Flatter the roller. Just feeling my way up into here wherever these little bits are very light. Little indications, just a little fluff of it. Yeah? How does that look? Effective, isn't it? When you've done that, that's going to be reflecting in the sea. So I'm going to use a little bit with the edge of my roller down here, just to go along the lines, the edge of the surf here, just to the edge here, and along here as well. Now this is, I'm now filling that bit of white line I left. I'm going to use my finger as well, just to blend it in. So we're mixing Crushed Blue now and a bit of Burnt Sienna to make a dark, little touch of water into it if you want to cover. Make sure you're going to cover this canvas up or not any white speckles showing through. And we'll paint this triangle to the right. Use more of this colour later. Whilst you've got it on your brush, you more to water brush now. If you see some little bits of this dark colour, I don't mean the footprints yet, we'll do those later. If you see a bit of so this dark colour just coming down to here, with the tip of your filament brush, which is what we're using, you can just add those very carefully, this line of um, dead weed, for instance, that's coming up here. You can just add that in all the way up here. This is where the sponge is coming to the place. So the yellow colour and white, a little bit of that pink. And this is where the sponge roller is using them very gently like this, just using the very edge of the sponge roller at the moment to feel my way across the sand. And as I come down here, you see I start, just going across, I start to use the whole roller. I use this more vertically, just there to get feeling of wet sand. And across again, so you see I've done this cross there. And I'm going to get the feeling of this sand using the edge of the roller and the front of the roller, right like the way down to here. More heavily just than this area here. And look how that comes together, it just pulls yeah. it out. So very little, so it's quite a thin mix. Okay. A thin mix just on the outside of my Just yellow oak and white is this. Just yellow oak and a little bit of white, well, a little bit of pink for us, and a little bit touch of that. I'm going to bring it just over the top of my mountain here to get a little bit of light reflecting over my mountain. Just fancy a bit of light over my mountain, so a little bit there as well. It's because I need to go back to here That's right. and pick up the blues and things again. And the yellow's there yet, but we'll go back. Right, I've now mixed a little bit of magenta and a little bit of white with it. The same mix, a little bit of magenta, a little bit of white, just to make it a lighter golden brown. I'm going to bring in that lighter golden brown, that pinky colour, just over this. Again, which will then make the purple seem purple up, blue up, which is just what you were saying just now about that colour being. So I've deliberately done that for your benefit. So white, a little touch of yellow over, and just start to get the feeling of these clouds. Just the tip of the, the tip of edge of the um, roller. That's it. So a little bit of white for a cool cream and a tiny touch of the yellow yellow. We can use a bit of this, so mix it nice and clean, make sure that is pure and only mucky stuff. And that's the sort of cream we want. If you're not sure, come and take a look. And watch how creamy it is. Look with my brush, to so brush that out, it's even, it's smooth, it's not too thin, it's not too thick. Look at that consistency. Beautifully on my brush, ready to go. Yeah? Uh, look at the difference in those two. There, yeah. There's the warm cream yeah. and there's the cool cream. And that's just the white banana. Yeah. Now, don't overdo this. Come up to your painting and just a little touch at the end of your brush, ever so delicately. Don't push it on. If you wanted to slab it and you're doing a big, strong, bright blue sky with white fluffy clouds, yes, you could. We just want to hint 
a little at the edges. I'm just going to use that tip of that brush just a little here, just to bring that cool yellow in here and there, little bits, wherever we think they're needed. Just the so I'm using a larger brush deliberately. It's down here. Then I'm going to go back to my white, take a little bit of white now, pure white, and just into that place a little bit of light. How effective that is, yeah? Carefully now, let's look at where these waves are. So on the background here, little touches of the white, and now you'll see what I meant about those clouds not standing out so much. So okay, oops, I'm reading somebody else's paint. Um, watch where these waves fold over like this. Those are the lines of waves back here. Look at the waves on your photograph and don't copy, use them. Look at how they differ. Are you using Look. your fine brush or the slight? I'm, I'm using the pointy one. The yeah. little pointy one, yeah. Look at how the waves cascade over like this. My brush strokes look. Watch please. Mm -hmm. One, two, three, four, in that direction mm -hmm. as the wave cascades. Mm -hmm. Make your brush stroke about the object you're painting. Mm -hmm. So all of these little waves are going to be about little linear strokes horizontally and little angles like this as they fold over here right the way back into the distance. And now you see the light shining from the sky across the waves. Mm -hmm. You're using the lemon yellow one, mate. I'm using a little bit more white into the lemon yellow. Yes. And when I do my brush into the palette, watch, I don't just mix it round. I'm mixing one way, I'm mixing the other. The brush is now a blade that way and a flat that way. So this is why I said you could use a filbert if you wanted. Mm -hmm. And I can do a fine line that way, or I can do a fatter line that way. You're not limited by the point of your brush. Right, I'm now going to make a very, very light blue. So I'm going to take some white and I'm going to use my coolest blue, which is what? The turquoise. So white and a little touch. It doesn't need much now. I'm using pure white, dry brush, and mixing a tiny touch of the turquoise. And I do need ever so tiny into there. You can virtually hardly tell that I'm using a light blue. It's so, it's so white. And if you want to, uh, here now for instance, look, I want a bit more light blue here, I'll a little bit more light blue, I'm doing some slightly vertical strokes and some horizontal ones. Tip of my brush, little vertical strokes, and through them then, a finger, just to get that feeling of reflection there. Right, now a very, very light pink. So again, white and a little tiny touch of my magenta, it's only just off white. So we're coming on to our final details. And again, you can fiddle as much as you want. Once you've got this part done, I'm going to now use finally a little bit of pure white. Do you want to watch that shall I do it? Okay, here we go. Not all over, just in some places here for instance, a pure white get the sparkling. If we just use pure white alone, it wouldn't have worked as well as this. But at just at the edges here, and we can just get that, that sparkle going, which pushes that right back because this is so much brighter. Not many, don't ever do it. Right, from this I'm now going to my darks and I'm going to start painting the little figure in the background. I want to put these footprints in. The footprints are made with the bird scanner and Prussian wood. As you dip your brush in your tea. Yeah. Right. yeah. So it's where the foam comes from. Yes. Great stuff. And you've got to get this right. So you might want to do it in pencil first. <laughs> um, it's just where the place is. So let's see. You might think well, it's going to start there, but actually, no. Um, on the photographs, it's over here somewhere. Here. Yeah. So if I were to go halves and quarters, look, halfway uh -huh. quarter, yeah. halfway quarter, it's just beyond the quarter, uh -huh. the first mark. Yeah. It's just about that size, bigger than you think. Yeah. And we then make 
And they're going to go around in a sort of shape to here. So I'm going to make a little mark over here. And they virtually disappear from there. So I'm going to go between there and there. That's my simplest way of doing it, isn't it? The method. So I've got to go from here, larger and larger. Now that was Prussian blue and brown, but look how brown that is. Mm. We don't really see how brown it is until I put some blue back into it. So to give it a shadow effect, I'm now going to go back to my Prussian blue pure, a little touch of the Prussian blue on my brush and pencil, and touch that in there, and look how dark that is against that. Mm -hmm. Right, on the edges of the footprints, the warm yellow that we did earlier, so yellow ochre, a little bit warmer this time, it's more of a gold, so my yellow ochre this time will be only just mm -hmm. off yellow. Look at your photograph closely, see how it works. Now, I'm just going to look at this here. Uh, I just want you to just watch a moment to get. I've actually finished this one for me. I'm just going to take some of that deep dark I just made with the Prussian in the. And you see where this falls over here. Not doing it anywhere else, it'd be too much. I'm just going to put a little bit of that in underneath these falling waves here just to pick that out a fraction. So you've got lots of time left to now adjust your painting a bit, just as you like it. You're being watched. Thank you. <laughs> right, who's going to start? From left to right, from that's okay. okay. Um, I really enjoy seascape, but then I always do. I like seascape, so one of my favourite subjects. Very pleased with the result. Great stuff. And next. Now, you weren't sure about the roller, were you, today? Um, it's something that you've enjoyed trying, I know, but you feel it's... You, for a smaller picture, it's difficult, isn't it? Yes. But it's useful for background work. But otherwise, you've enjoyed? Oh, I've really enjoyed it, yes. Good. It's been nice trying to do something Lovely picture you've got there in the end. A nice, nice breezy sea. <laughs> and we move on. Yep, enjoyed it. Uh, not sure about the roller, but I can see how you could use it in the background and then finish the painting with brushes. I mean, more traditional style, really nice. Um, I still got a lot to learn about going too far and balancing it. Ah, just at the end overdoing it, yeah. yeah. I think if you get a chance, and you can go back to my YouTube site, have a look at one or two of the films on the cafe scenes, the right. big paintings, and you'll see then how they come into their own more. Right. This was such a small painting that doing the texturing was a bit difficult, they're rather clumsy for that. Yeah. But we still got some lovely effects that would have been hard with the brush, wouldn't they? True, true. Yeah, yeah. And sponge is just a little bit too dappy. That's right, whereas we can do a more gentle grading with the sponge roll once you get used to it. Yeah. Oh, well done. And finally, but not least. Yeah, um, I'm, I'm pleased with the way it looks now. I found it quite challenging, um, bringing all those different elements together. But I love the colours. I really, really love those vibrant blues and tones as you go through to the sand. I would never have thought about having purple in the sand. That's the thing, isn't it? Because when we start painting, we think about things separately. We have blue sky, green grass, brown tree trunks, and now we're looking at overall light coming into all of the picture. So we've got the blues coming right the way through, but just in warm and cool hues. So you've learnt about pulling all of those different hues together, and it makes it coherent. It makes it one whole effect of light. Yes. So we're going to start seeing more and more colour. And the beauty is that you are learning to see. When I first went to college, one of my tutors said, we're going to teach you how to see it. I can see it, I don't need glasses, what are you talking about? But you will see more. You'll be more privileged than people around you. You'll be going home thinking, Prussian blue, ultramarine, cool, warm. You'll be seeing more than others. And it's the same with poetry. How can we write a poem without understanding language? 
if we can't understand a sentence or a structure or the flow of it, and it's the same with painting now. So I'm just going to come and join you now. Come into that. I've tried to because it's a bit grim, so I'm laughing because it's already <laughs> <laughs> So let's come just under our chins, like somewhere there, all in the line, and all in the line. And we'll go greens. Thank you very much. And that's been a lovely day again. So we're going to miss a week next week, and then we're back to do the lake scene. Um, early morning, mist coming up over a lake with just a few colours on MDF again. Okay, see you then. Great. Thank you.